Dear panelists, participants, and colleagues, greetings from Inbound Headquarters. I'm Jin Wei, Capacity Building Manager of International Bamboo and Red Tan Organization. I am happy to announce the opening of the webinar, Bamboo Sectoral Development for a Green Circular Economy in West Africa. Today, African countries are generally facing challenges such as dwindling of forest resources, the serious destruction of ecosystems, serious soil and water erosion, extreme poverty, and the intensification of the impact of climate change. African countries urgently need to develop environmental friendly materials and products, accelerate the promotion of sustainable production and consumption, and the development of renewable resources. According to incomplete statistics, 36 countries in Africa have natural bamboo forest resources. As an important part of African forest ecosystem, bamboos do not only play an important role in biodiversity conservation and ecological services, but also an important role in supporting livelihoods in rural areas. Despite its prevalence, the industrial processing and transformation of bamboo into high standard products remains very low and thus limit Africa's bamboo contribution to the global market trade. It is necessary to build the capacity of African bamboo stakeholders on bamboo industry planning, value chain development, and related policy and financing development. This webinar is the first of its type that IMBA tried to introduce the concept and practices of green financing and development capacity evaluation to the bamboo sector in the West Africa region. It would have a great advisory value for the other regions as well. The webinar is a collaborated product of IMBAR and Nature Harriet. Nature Harriet is a professional company based in the Netherlands. It provides planning design services in nature heritage based green spatial development and projects, sustainable investment and financing strategies for territorial development as well as related innovative communication tools. Nature Heritage inaugurated Knowledge at Terra Classrooms with inter-regional supporting institutions in 2018, which is a multi-actor communication and educational tool that bridges knowledge and information gaps between remote comparable developing regions. Ms. Xiaoying Liu is the founder of Nature Heritage. She is the senior spatial planning consultant, territorial policy strategist, expert member of Sino EU panel on land and soil, and a Netherlands registered architect. Next, please allow me to invite Ms. Xiaoying Liu to introduce the webinar and the speakers. Xiaoying, the floor is yours. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from around the world. And I'm really happy to meet you here introduce you the first of its kind of this multi-actor webinar. Before we are jumping to the speakers of today and we just show you shortly what we had done as pre-studies before we could design exact workable multi-actor setting. First of all, we have studied the locations of uh, West Africa and its size and its also geography. And very importantly, it's land cover that you can see from a mapping uh, out of 2013 that is made by Geological Institute in America. This shows very well that uh, West Africa has a very diverse uh, typology. Most of these typologies that you see here are very suitable for grow different species of bamboo because bamboo are mostly growing in tropical uh, subtropical and temperate uh, climate and tropical forest and bamboo forests are very suitable to grow together and support each other. Actually, they are not separatable ecosystem if they are totally growing in nature. And below you see a short study to collect all the different possible potentials for bamboo as eco restoration method and as cultivation 
sector and also as manufacturing sectors, what could be done here. And we made also comparison to more advanced regions of different bamboo sectors. The Zhejiang province is the most advanced province in China with bamboo sector. When China started to use bamboo resources and rebuild the ecosystem, what happened is that starting from 90s, the growth of forest and bamboo forest, they were growing together. So you can see uh, the time from the 80s and 90s that uh, the forests were less. And you see in 2004 about that the forest resource altogether including the bamboo forest resource, they reached the maximum. And because in the 90s, the bamboo industry in Zhejiang started to grow steadily. And into 2010, the bamboo resource has reduced a bit, but stabilized because the sectors are diversifying themselves and also including some high standard uh, products and the service sectors. And also in recent years, the carbon trade, they all emerged. So you can see see that the bamboo forests, when they start to grow with the sectors in a more and more healthy development pathways, the forest, including the bamboo forest, they will stabilize. And you see the different typologies that are possible for the sectoral cl functional clusters, but I'm not going to details right now. It's just to show you that it is most possible for any regions in the world when they can grow bamboo. And here, just shortly, that uh, Africa has now 1% of the global bamboo um, commodity trade, but it has 2% of import. It means that there is already a market of 2% of the global African trade. So if you see that there are 12 related sectors, and six from them are presented in the bamboo commodity trade overview, which Imbar is making every year. But there are more sectors. So there are more potentials. African bamboo species mm -hmm. mainly include native tropical, symposial, and imported species. And these represent 13.3% of global bamboo resources, which through green sector development and sustainable management can help save the tropical rainforests in Africa. The six speakers that are answering the questions today are not alone because we have a multi-actor approach. We have studied two months before to approach the multi-actors as speakers and interviewees, which means that they might not be today, but they will answer the questions by a written form or via phone call. So we made um, 12 uh, um, categories at the moment. Six of them are related to bamboo sectors. They are not bamboo sectors, but very important for bamboo sectors. For example, the banks today, also the international organizations from UN to INBAR, but also WWF, and also the carbon and climate institutions are also very important. And we have the investors, of course, and the government and the timber-based industries, also very important, and all the different services. And we have players from the bamboo sectors, bamboo-related certifications, and bamboo growers associations, and of course the growers themselves, and bamboo enterprises and associations, bamboo market and consumer, and also the research and innovation institutions. And I have to say that uh, none of these players are to be missed. 